Hi everybody, this is Oksana and today we're going to make a Tree of Life pendant. Now I do have three other Tree of Life pendant tutorials, so if you've seen those and you kind of have a basic grasp on how to make a tree, then this tree teaches you some new aspects like braiding the trunk, making little leaves on the branches, and also the bale here is a little bit different. So if you like any of these additional extra details, you can incorporate them into your tree. You don't have to make a tree exactly like this. You can make a normal trunk, for example, and just make the leaves. Whatever you prefer, you can mix and match. And before we get started here, I just want to say that I hope you will consider subscribing to my YouTube channel if you're not already subscribed and hitting the notification bell to be notified of new videos, which I post every single weekend. And after I post the video, the pendant that I made in the video goes up for auction on the community tab of my YouTube channel. And to see that, you have to join, you have to get a membership, and a friend or insider member gets to participate in the auctions. So if you're interested in learning more about memberships, you can see that button below the video about that. So let's get started making this tree. Now the first wire we're going to use is some 19 gauge wire. Now mine is square, but feel free to use round. I just didn't have any round that was 19 gauge. Um, RioGrande.com is where I bought mine and it is just dead soft copper. And I found 20 gauge to be a little bit too floppy for a tree this size. So that is why I'm using 19 gauge and mine is about 13 inches. And my stone, it's like a medium sized stone. It's a moonstone and it is round. You can use other shapes. It can be oval. That's totally fine. It's about 32 millimeters. So what we need to do with this wire is we need to shape it in a circle because the stone is a circle. So I'm kind of folding it in half to find the middle of it here. And then you just kind of want to bend it with your fingers or maybe you have something round that you can use to bend it around, but you want to use your stone for reference. You want the circle to be smaller than your stone. So you have a little bit of an edge there so that the wire doesn't peek over the edge and you don't see it from the front. So I'm just going to go ahead and attempt to do that manually by hand. And if your stone is a different shape, same thing, just do it in the shape of your stone. It's basically like a little frame for the back of your stone. I'm just making mine a smidge smaller. It's just a little too close to the edges and I find that when you are attaching the branches of the tree, it can pull on the wire a little bit. So if it's like really close to the edge, it can pull it over the edge. So this looks good to me. Let me just grab my pliers because what we have to do now is we have to bring these wires upwards so that we can make the bale. Let me get the bend in here a little, a little sharper. All right, that looks good. So now they come together nicely. You just have to kind of play around with it a little bit so that the bale is just going straight up and isn't going sideways. That looks good. So what you want to do now, um, if you have a hammer and an iron block, hammering this to give it a little bit of strength is always good. 
even though it's 19 gauge, which is, you know, a thicker, stronger gauge, I do find that hammering is, you know, really helpful. So I'm just going to do that. You want to do it on the ground. I'm just holding it in the air so you can see. So here's what it looks like. I cut off the sound so it wouldn't be too loud for you, but it kind of flattens the wire a little bit. And you just want to do that on this entire frame. So after you've hammered the frame and it's now been strengthened, it's time to do our bale. So I'm using some 24 gauge half round wire, but if you want to use round wire, you can use 26 gauge round wire and you can just do a weaving pattern, whatever weaving pattern that you prefer. That is for two wires and you would have a woven um, bale. Uh, but something uh, quicker if you happen to have half round wire. You don't have to do a weaving pattern. If you have half round wire, you can just wrap it around and around and that stays nicely because it is half round. So I'm just getting it started there. And then once I have that, I can go in here and cut off the excess wire there leaving myself just a little tail end and that little tail end you just want to press that down and that will be the back wherever the little tail end ends up so I'm just going to slide this down and now I can just press on this whole thing so this will be the back um, when we put our stone the stone will go here in case that matters to you right now this is pretty reversible looking. We haven't really done anything yet. Well, except for the tail end now, but prior to that. So we're just going to keep wrapping now that it's um, attached. This is still connected to the spool, so that's why I have to guide it with one hand and turn this piece with my other hand. That way the wire doesn't get twisted and it just lays down nicely here on the bale. So once this is getting long, mine is close to an inch, just a little bit less, you want to trim off the wire end there and you want to do that on the same side as the other wire end. And then grab your pliers and press down that wire end as well as just this whole thing, this whole bale. Now we're going to have the front facing us, the side that doesn't have the little wire ends. We're going to grab right below here with our pliers and we're going to bend this slightly towards ourselves like this to make the bale. Now normally you would just curve this into a bale shape. You can use some bale making pliers to help you. If you'd like, I'm going to show you um, an additional step if you wanted to embellish your bale a little bit, make it a little bit different. So the additional step is instead of just bringing this down and being finished with your bale, we're going to spread these wires a little bit like this. And then when we're curving it here, we're going to bring the wires here onto the front so they're going to go all the way around and this is kind of trickier with square wire I wish I had round wire but I didn't because um, the edges of the square wire can get twisted so it's hard to see on camera but because it's square it's got these flatter edges there I'm trying to have the flat edge kind of go forward here so that it's not um, like a corner you know of the square and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this down so that it goes right next to my bail there and then I'm gonna adjust my bale making pliers and I'm going to push it down some more 
now have to kind of take them out and put them like this as I keep pushing this down until it gets to where it needs to be right here and we're just gonna push it so that it goes down and is the same level as our frame like this and it's just an additional little step if you like the look of this bale and what I like to do at this point is I'm just gonna cut these wires right here just like this and then you can use um, your pliers or round nose pliers or since I already have these bale making pliers in my hand I'm gonna use those to just make a little loop here on these ends of the wire so that um, we're kind of hiding the little wire end away and then when we attach our branches to our tree we'll be using these and we'll connect them so I'm holding the bale here with my fingers so that they don't move the wires don't move and I'm using my pliers to bring these wires so that they touch the edges so when we're attaching we'll be able to attach it to the frame there here's what it looks like from the front and you can take your stone and you can kind of see how that works and how that fits so this is what the bale will look like this is how the frame is looking on the back now it's time to cut the branches so 26 gauge round wire that's what I'm going to be using and I'm going to cut six pieces of this wire about 12 inches each piece all right so we've got our six pieces and this isn't a lot I do normally like to use more for my trees but because this is a special tree and we're doing some unique things I think it works better with a little bit less branches so we're gonna bring the ends together here so that we can fold this in half because we need to know where the middle is so once you've determined the middle zoom back in we're gonna take these one at a time And we're gonna grab our frame here we're gonna put it through till it gets here to the middle like this and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this wire and we're gonna wrap it around the frame just that one time and it looks like this it creates kind of two little wraps there and what you want to do is you want to bring that closer together and you want to press down on it this way as well so let me show you here's what it looks like and this is how you want to attach all six of your wires just like this just keep putting them one next to each other and they slide so you can slide this one to the side and just put them all here on the bottom middle all right so after you've attached all six of them here's what it will look like and it will look like if you count the individual wires there'll be 12 individual little wires so it's doubled because each wire was folded in half so it has both ends coming out this way so we've essentially created 12 little roots or branches so you want to just push them together like this so this is the back and this is the front so you want the stone to go here on the front you can check 
that it's all centered nicely, that your frame is centered nicely here by flipping it over. And what you want to do is you want to hold this tight because you don't want the frame to move out of place and you want to bend these roots forward onto the front of your stone. So if we flip it over, here's what it'll look like. So now it's easier to just remove the stone and we're going to braid these. So we're going to split them up. So three groups of four to make our braid with. And then the thing is about braiding wire, it's not just about pulling it like braiding hair. You're actually kind of moving it and shaping it with your fingers to get the best result. So if you know how to make a braid, like how to braid hair, this is the same concept except you are not doing as much pulling as you are just kind of guiding and bending the wire into place. Because it doesn't quite work if you just pull on it hard. So you can see the braid there, the braided pattern. Just grab my stone here to make sure that this is still nice and it hasn't moved out of place at all. Now it you can hold the stone here and you can take some painters tape um, to hold it extra well. That's definitely um, an option if you find it easier with the stone being there. Now sometimes these wires all kind of gather together in like a little bunch and you can try to separate them out. It's up to you or just let them. See, it's because it looks like it's becoming thinner if I just let them do that. All right, so what we have to determine here is I think it's a good time to start doing our branches. So we've got a braided trunk. We don't want to go too far because then we're going to have such a limited space to do our branches. So the way I am going to do the branches here, given the number of wires that we have, is I'm going to do groups of three. So I'm going to do three right here and three right there. Okay, so we're going to kind of set those apart. Um, and now we have this here, but it looks really nice if the branches aren't all just coming out of one area. It would look nice if we were to kind of continue this braid a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this wire, that's the single wire, I'm going to bring it underneath the other wires here to have it join this other single wire that is here on this side. So we have two wires here now. Try to kind of line them up together if you can. There we go. And then here we have four wires, so we can just split them into two so that we have our groups of um, three groups again. So I'm going to attempt to kind of braid this a little bit. It might not come out that great because it's becoming quite thin, but I think that's good. I just want my other branches to be a little bit higher. So now I want to make two groups of three. So I'm just taking this, bringing it over, and then we have our other group of three. So now we've created four groups of three. 
and what I want to do, and I'm going to do this to all the groups, is I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to combine them into a branch by twisting them together. Then I'm going to take one wire out and then I'm going to twist the remaining two wires just a little bit. Now it's important to note here that you want some space for your branches on your stone. So when you're doing this, put it up against the stone and make sure that it doesn't like reach all the way up here. Make sure that there's space for these branches because we're going to make like little leaves on them and stuff. So this one, it would have been better if it was just a smidge shorter, but it is what it is. That's fine. It's still still good enough but having learned that lesson I'm gonna make this one a smidge shorter so just when I'm twisting it when I'm twisting all three of these wires together I'm just looking okay so now we're gonna stop a little sooner so it's a little bit shorter and then twist just the two wires together just a few times here. Okay, so there's my other branch. Um, and now we're gonna do these. So these I'm gonna twist just a little bit because it's towards the bottom of the stone. There's less space there, so I'm just gonna do a little twist, get that one wire out, and now twist just the two wires together for the remainder of our branch. And if this is, if you feel like this is kind of overwhelming, you don't have to do this exactly. I'm just trying to be detailed and describe exactly how I'm twisting these. But the truth of the matter is, you know, trees come in all kinds of shapes and, you know, all kinds of squiggly branches. So, you don't have to do it just like I'm doing it. Just twist them together however it feels like twisting for you to form some tree branches here. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed and like you have to follow this super, super exactly. So now, if I put my tree here onto my stone, we've got our braided trunk and then we got some branches coming off of that. So, it's time to attach, and how I like to start the attachment is right here where we have this gap. I'm going to take these two branches and I'm going to crisscross them by putting one on one side and one on the other, just like this. So those will be the first two that I attach. But, because we're doing kind of a different thing here, where we're making little leaves, I'm going to need to do that first. So you don't have to do the little leaves, you can just have straight up branches, but if you're going to do the little leaves, you're going to take your wire and you're going to put a little loop in it like this. And then in the other direction. And it's totally up to you how many of these little leaves you add, how frequent they are. So now I'm just going to do one here on this other wire and I think I'm just going to do the one because I don't know where I would put my second one. I don't want it to like super get in the way. I'm just thinking. I want them to look all nice together, you know? I think if I just kind of carefully place it like this, that should be fine. Okay, so here on the back, we have these two wires and we are going to attach them to the frame. So we're just going to take them, push it underneath the frame, and just pull on it with your pliers. Don't pull super hard because you're going to mess up the little leaves that we made. And let me grab it again. 
You want to do this several times because you want it to be well attached. All right, it's probably good. And then when you're done, what you do is you just trim that, but you leave yourself a little end. And then you take that little end and you curve it down and then you just pinch it down with your pliers to tuck it away. And make sure that your frame is centered here. It doesn't move to one edge of the stone. Just always check on that because it can start to move as you start attaching. So now we're just attaching the other side here. Just gonna do a bunch of wraps like I did on that side. Oops. I'm also holding here with my finger kind of the front and the little leaves so they don't get moved around too much there. All right, so I'm just gonna trim that to give myself a little wire end. I'm gonna take that wire end, I'm gonna curve it down. It's kinda hard to get in here because <laughs> of the bail, but I'm just gonna try my best. And get in there and tuck that little wire end away. So coming back to the front, we are going to make more of these little leaves and it's up to you how you do them. So that looked good with just one because there wasn't a lot of space there but then this next one there's a little bit more space so I can do two and then I'm bringing the wire to the back all right, so I think that looks good. We did these two wires, now there's these two here. Um, I'm gonna curve this way, and then the other way, there's a little more space. You don't have to do it symmetrical. You don't have to do as many as you did on this side. I think it's nice when it's not symmetrical and it doesn't match, because then it looks more like a real natural tree and we're gonna do two over here all right oh my tree kind of moved all right let's move it back so here's what that is looking like so now we have two wires on each side to attach you can see oh there we go let's try to center that frame a little bit so I'm just gonna grab my pliers to help me and I'm gonna attach all four of these new wires that we just made the branches for. I'm gonna do about four wraps around the frame to make sure that it holds well. Oops. And then once I have my four wraps, I'm just trimming it, leaving myself a little end there, taking that end, kind of curving it under so that I can tuck it away like that. So I'm just gonna do that. That's gonna be very repetitive to show you every branch on camera, but I'm just gonna attach the next branch and then these two, just exactly how I did that there. All right, so I just finished attaching the last one of these. So I attached all four. And if we come back here onto the front, you can see them there all attached. So now we can start working on these bottom ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and work on making the leaves out of these. Since these are a bit longer, can probably fit three. Let's see. Yep. So I'm just gonna do the first one here and then I'll do the first one on the other side as well.
All right, and now I'm gonna go onto the back and I'm gonna attach those two branches just the same way that we've been attaching them all. All right, so I'm gonna attach them both and come right back. All right, so I have attached those two. Now here from the front, I just wanna point out that you can use your pliers to move these little leaves, like if they started to overlap with one another or some of them are too close or too far apart and you just want to adjust them, you can use your pliers to do that. So now we're going to do the rest. So now we're gonna do the next branches. So and just figure out the placement of your leaves there. I'm gonna do um, two leaves on this one and then we'll see how many will fit on this bottom one. This wire has kind of like a kink in it. Ooh. I think I made that worse. <laughs> I was just trying to kind of straighten it a little bit. Yeah, I think this one might get three. That looks good. And only two will fit on this one. I think I just want this to be a little bit smaller. Push that to the back and now we have this very last one here on the bottom and I'm gonna do three three leaves on that one So that all looks good here from the front. So all that's left is just to attach them here on the back. So I'm just gonna go ahead and attach like normal by wrapping it around the frame about four times and then trimming that off. Now the only thing, there is gonna be one difference here when I get to that last wire so I'll show you that. And so I'm just gonna trim, finish that one off there. All right, so with this last wire, it kind of lines up near here, and we do have to attach this. So what you wanna do is wrap around the frame a couple times, And then we're gonna wrap through here and also underneath the frame, just like this. And we're gonna do that twice. You can kind of squish that together, push that down a little bit. There you can see the wraps there. So now we're gonna go around the frame again. Several times there, maybe like three times. 
and that is how we have attached that little loop there from the bail. Then I'm just going to trim it like normal and tuck it away just like normal. So you just want to do that on this side as well. So I'm just here on the other side with my very last one attaching this last loop here. And just like that and then I'm going to wrap around only the frame and then we'll be all done and our tree will be completed. So just going to trim that and then I'm just going to grab and tuck that down and push it away. There we go. So the back is finished, the stone is secured, and the last step is just if anything got moved here on the front, any of these little leaves, if you don't like their positioning, you can kind of do that, arrange it, push it down. Um, this branch here that's like very straight, but our tree is very curly, so you might want to put like a little bend in the branch. It's up to you. So just some finishing touches. Make sure none of make sure none of your leaves are raised. If any of them got raised, make sure you push them down. And that is it. Kind of fix up this braid a little bit. Our tree is completed. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.